um, I was watching, and you should watch this, Joe Rogan podcast uh, yesterday with Jordan Peterson, who's this professor from Toronto, University of Toronto. And there's this phenomenon going on around, going on that where people are creating gender pronouns. So rather than be labeled as he or she, they're labeled as like Z, like X E, she, you know, uh, X I R, sir. Uh, there's a lot of them. I guess there's like over seventy of them, and people are kind of like, I, I don't identify as a man. I don't identify as a woman. I identify as this. Well, I don't identify as that. I identify as this, but I don't identify as you. I identify as this. So then they passed a law in Canada where professors have to call people by the pronoun that they choose. And Jordan Peterson is like, no, no, they're a male or a female. They get to, they can pick one or the other, but you can't make me change my words. Just because, you know, because the way you feel, it caused an uproar. And, uh, hold on, I can turn my volume down. And, uh, he's been getting, like, global attention because people are, like, pissed off at him. And he's like, well, his argument is very interesting because he studies, um, Marxism. And basically the rise of communism and Nazism and the way that they controlled language as a rise to, like, so the thing is about society, what I've always found interesting is if you go extreme in either direction, you know, they say left and right, which ultimately, you know, it's kind of a, a delusion. But if you are extremely liberal or you're extremely conservative, it's very dangerous and they become very similar in their extremity. So like Hitler was an extreme liberal. He was like, torch the Constitution, tear it down, start something new, kind of like. As opposed to maybe like Stalin, who who was an extreme social conservative. I, maybe, maybe, maybe he was a, he seemed like he was just kind of mangling the system. But anyway, so this is like these people that are creating new gender pronouns are kind of like extremist liberal. This is extremist liberal behavior. And then you see get Trump get elected is like a response to this almost like, fuck you. You're trying to make me, I can't say faggot. I can't say nigger. I can't say gay. Fuck you. This is my like this is my response to that. So being PC and forcing people to fall into your your will is very dangerous, even if you think it's for the social good. And I think that that has kind of happened in the last decade way too much. That people are are pussyfooting around, walking on eggshells, afraid that they're gonna say or do the wrong thing and people are gonna be upset with them. And that, those kind of things, that, that can be a very dangerous world to live in because ultimately freedom of speech and freedom of expression is one of the tenets of freedom, of our of, of faith, of our culture. You have to be able to say what you think, even if it's offensive. And then you work it out. But if, you, if it's illegal to say what you think, there's a serious fucking problem. So Peterson went on Rogan yesterday to talk about it. And the thing that I found the most fascinating was when he started talking about truth and saying, and I think this is maybe just like a Carl Jung idea or some, some idea. He, he was quoting a lot of philosophers as he was going on about this concept. But the way to defeat a totalitarian state is not to create a better government. It's to speak the truth. This is his posit. Or position, I guess you would call it. And I thought, damn straight, Jordan. Keep going. And he said, there's, there's different kinds of truths. There's scientific truth and there's religious truth. And they're not the same thing. Scientific truth basically explains what is and what is not. Religious truth explains how to be. So it's kind of, well, all truth is an accepted belief. You know, we, we come to believe science, scientific facts as, as truth because we all agreed on it. We said this system is good enough to prove it. And so we agree. There's a consensus. We agree. Religious truth is similar. If you have enough people believing in, in the word of God, in the word of Jesus, for instance, the Christian religion, then that becomes like a, a sort of truth to live like that. To be kind to your neighbor. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Like that's, that's, that's truth. 
That's a kind of truth. And and it kind of like flipped a light bulb on in my mind when, when he was talking about this because I've been so hung up on the truth lately, the last 10 years of my life. And realizing, you know, partway into my into my grand uh, debacle, whatever you would call it, my uh, it's not a debacle. All these online videos where I'm hardcore being like, be honest, is that truth is subjective. There is no objective truth. Every thing that we think is is the truth is is so because we have perceived it to be so. And it, before we were here, it wasn't that wasn't the truth. We had to realize it before it became real. I know that's redundant. We had to realize it. Um, so, so I get the relatively objective scientific truths. I get it. You know, the sky's blue, right? We all kind of agree on that. Still subjective, but it's like we can all agree. Uh, enough of us can agree that we move on. And the religious truth, you don't have to be a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist. You don't have to identify with a religion to have a religious truth. You know, religion is like this adherence, this belief in structure. Mathematics is a type of religion. It's a faith-based belief. You just accept that that's what it is. Like, one plus one doesn't have to equal two. We've just accepted. We, we made it up and we said, well, it's going to do that, so now that's what that is. So it's kind of a religious truth. Now, then you can almost argue that mathematics blends the border between science and religion. It's absolutely fascinating. But religious truth of be good to people, this is like the, the moral narrative that's been passed down in the books and, and the stories and the myths and the movies and the television shows and the, and, and the music and everything where it's like guy speaks the, or girl speaks the truth falls into chaos pulls their way up out of it comes out stronger and continues to speak the truth I, I, you've been there you know what I'm talking about I've been there. You know, I can, I, I'll definitely, I'll be thinking about this for a long time. I, I can delve into it more, but I have to go. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, to me, it feels very unresolved because there's something about religious truth that I really want to get into, but really it's about take care of yourself. You know, this is the big one. The people that want to change the world, that are looking out there, which looks like this, by the way, for me. Beautiful surroundings. I love my outside. Got my windows closed because it's a little chilly out. Um, the people that are trying to change the world by changing you, changing them. Fixing that thing, fixing that thing, making sure those people are, it's not the right way to do it. If you really want to change the world, you have to change yourself and the world changes. We have serious impact on our surroundings, whether we are physically touching it or not, we're messing with it in a good way, you know, or bad, but we are, it is changing. So I've been, uh, I think I, I, I was kind of misled lately and thought that I could change the world by telling you what to do and, and making them better and, and fixing that thing. And it ultimately, it's just down to me. I, I know I need to meditate. I need to have self-control, taming the body, the animal within, hunger, food, eating the right food, calming my mind when I want to jerk off and watch porn, just clear my head and relax. That does wonders. Cleaning my house, which God knows could be cleaned right now. I've, I got a drone, which I still haven't turned on. I have it all set up, and I haven't turned it on yet. Uh, kitchen, do my dishes. I made this huge pot of stew. Huge. It's huge, and I'm not, I'm not even just saying that. I'll show you. I 
bought this pot. It's a large pot of stew. The stew itself looks like this. Oh, it smells so good. Oh God, it smells so good. It's amazing too because this stew ended up being, can you see in there? Very filling. So I didn't even get half, I probably filled half of the pot up. The stew ended up being, it's like all tomatoes. I must have used like 15 tomatoes in there or something. Hold on, I'll be right back. And like green, you know, peppers. It's all vegetables and fruit. And it's really filling. It's got like chunky peppers in there, like green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, all diced up. So like every time I get a big a bite of like crispy, juicy pepper, squirts all this water into my mouth. So it's like very juicy. It's called my juicy stew. And it's so filling. Like I'll eat a bowl of it and I'll feel super full. But then it'll digest relatively rapidly. And then... I'm like totally hungry again later. Doesn't have that. Doesn't tire me out because I was eating Subway. You know the the restaurant Subway with like the bread and the meat last week and the week before, and it was wearing me out. Not in a good way. So this stew is revitalizing. That's a big part for me of changing the world, which is so silly because I love it. it I, I like it. I'm happy. Makes me feel good, and that is changing the world, man, because, geez, God, you put a video online, you reach 10 million people. If you feel good when you do it, that's going to change the world in a very different way than if you feel like ass. You know what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to go write a blog, but what am I going to write about? What am I going to write about? Let's find out. I'm going to write about... Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, America's Beards. Got this huge list of content that I'm going to choose an, an idea from. Well, I don't know yet. Well, I'll find out in the next five minutes. Five minutes. Maybe something about the World Trade Center. You know, they say the World Trade Center came down to controlled demolition. Yet the U.S. government still hasn't accepted that. The, what is it, National Institute of... Science and Technologies, NIST, N-I-S-T. It's like a dog. It's like a lap dog. For the government. When in truth, someone lined those buildings with bombs. I don't know who. But that's when you look at the way the World Trade Centers fell. That's the way buildings fall in controlled demolition. Straight down in free fall. A building would never fall in free fall if it was exploded from the top and fires caused it to like shake and crumble. It wouldn't fall in free fall. It would, like part of it would break and it would topple off. So whenever you see a building fall straight down like that, it's a controlled demolition. The bases are blown out. The structures are all blown out at once. Got some got some wild implications, eh? Hey man, okay. So I'm very serious. Speak your truth. Don't get too hung up on the words. Words are just, you know, it's the way people are trying to express their feelings. Try and be more aware of people's feelings when they're talking and not so much the things that are being said. Because it might be a scary word that, that but that doesn't matter. Just, just let people express themselves and feel them and get on their wavelength. This is all advice that I've been getting in the last, the last month and, uh, I'm writing it to memory. Take care of yourself.